Nathan Fillion. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, solving space crimes, doing homework, and listening to Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. But first, let's dance the merengue, because I spent time in Latin America and understand other cultures. You are so beautiful, Missy. May I kiss you with my mouth? Of course, Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion? <laughs> Ladies only, welcome to our March edition of Nick's Nonfiction. You're here with your host, comic Nick Munez. It's Ladies Month. You guys own one twelfth of the year now, so you got your own book coming in. Nancy Friday's My Secret Garden. Nancy Friday, one of her kinks is getting dogged out in the middle of Madison Square Garden. 40,000 seats sold. Everyone she's ever known cheered her along. This book is from the 1960s, our puritanical culture when it was blasphemy for a woman to explore their own sexuality. Nancy Friday was on Oprah, all the talking head shows, read the bio for the show. She was liberating young girls' sexuality. We do this every year. Last year we did Betty Friedan's The Feminine Mystique, and that one's all about why you getting married. That's not true feminism. You're signing away most of your life worth every year you put off having kids your worth increases by 10 percent that's more beneficial than a guy getting an extra year of education this isn't going to be any statistical analysis like we did more sex safer sex for february this story is all personal women writing in because what gets women off when you rattle off stats and facts saber metrics about your favorite baseball team women they hate talking about themselves <laughs> men listen with a keen ear today we're gonna of course get the tips in one of the chapters is nancy's brothel of bitches it's 16 different rooms with 16 different kinks this is probably going to be our dirtiest edition of the year we hashtag destroyed the patriarchy last year so i mean now we could have a little bit of fun with it <laughs> we're cleansing the palate from that economist it's a 50-page book as well, so ladies, if you have a book club, this is the perfect reader, and it could be classified as erotic literature. I've been saying for a while, we gotta do Nick's fiction, Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Most of the situations from this show, it's a shorter book, I would suggest it. It's a staple for its time. Men, get your notepads out. Dating tips are plenty to come. You show up five minutes late so the lady doesn't feel any excess pressure. You're wearing sweats, casual, big dick energy. One of the lady's kinks today is crotch watching. And then, you know, be rude to the waiter. Assert your dominance on this date. More helpful tips to come about the author Nancy Friday. Lived from 1933 to 2017. She was a fighter, 80-something years, from Pittsburgh, died in Manhattan, went to Wesleyan College in Massachusetts through the 50s. That alone is bold. Getting an education at that time, they taught us in my women's studies class, over 50% of women dropped out back through the 50s, 60s, 70s era. And that's because there were no gender studies major. You couldn't major in pansexual dolphin queer relations. Nancy spent decades writing female empowerment articles for New York and French publications. Oh, ne je l'ai pas le français. How come none of the kinks today are smelly, foreign, mustache-ridden French guys? Now nah, you'd think that's a room, right? <laughs> We're not going over the men's kinks. We like hairy European women. We like anything visual. That's something for the women as well. Mentioned before that she was on Oprah, Larry King Live, Good Morning America, NPR's Talk to the Nation. She wrote this book, True Story, after getting kicked out of the bedroom and kicked out of her ex-boyfriend's life for telling him mid-sex, I am thinking about one of my exes right now. And I bet all girls do this. They have all their little mental keys to unlock the Pandora's. Men just need more friction to simplify things. <laughs> Nancy, she came out right with it, said it in the bedroom. We'll hear from sex marriage therapists today, people that think they know all the ins and outs, how to make every relationship work, which every relationship, like an individual, is unique. So there's going to be different tricks. I'm sure you will find your room today. Going on all these talk shows, it was taboo to talk about this. 
you know you were in like a woman's group at your church and you had to wear a poodle skirt cardi b didn't have her asshole on cnn every day 2020 culture it's pushing little girls you're not gonna go to college good now back down to 50 percent 50% 50% of the other girls are going to make OnlyFans pages. The way of the future. It's only seven chapters today. A couple of them are quicker. That third one, I'm telling you, is a complete banger. So, Ladies Month, let's celebrate with Nancy Friday's My Secret Garden. I'm slugging some coffee before chapter one. Tell me what you're thinking about, he said. I know he heard me, but, like, was he listening? Like, I know that... He's always just trying to, like, fix my problems, but he's not just listening to how I feel about things. Men are fixers. Tell me what you're thinking about. They just want to air out their opinions. Miss Friday, she wrote this after confessing to that humorous lover that she was thinking of another man during sex. She wrote this book in um, culmination as well. It had a lot of excerpts from all those radio shows she did where people wrote in, like a love line type of show. It's an age-old debate. Do you keep faking whatever your lover thinks that you're into to preserve his ego or do you want to explore the depths of your sexuality you know you could probably have a much more powerful rolling 10 minute orgasm as a lady if he was really doing the dirty talk that you like oh you like that ex of yours i bet he couldn't lay it down on you like this and then she's like oh my god he knows take it to another level and this is the question girls were writing in past 50 years dating shows today past 10 years that i've heard in the digital age talk about this are you supposed to just keep faking the orgasm saying yeah i think i got off you'll know when you get off i will feel the kegels constricting my cock let's be real here you know when you're getting off she's saying Every marriage is specific. Is your husband, (laughs) have you lied to him to this point in marriage that he thinks he's the stud and he can get you off every single time? Now you got to go along with it. Because if you don't, that's probably 10 expensive years of therapy and sex coaching. Your husband's going to be forever insecure about those years that you were lying. Just lie to the grave. Deny, deny, deny. That's always the answer. She was able to respond to a lot of these people by saying get into some erotic fiction and then maybe choose a paragraph that really got you off and tell your husband to read this. And if he's an analytical fella, then he'll start putting some of those moves on you. Or (laughs) we have porn nowadays, just like send him a link while he's at work, NSFW, and it gets him fired. Seriously, watch porn together. That's a fun activity with a significant other. As Nancy toured around the country, she would ask women what they like And most of them didn't even know. (laughs) This guy just sucks. I'm a young man. I've been with some uh, older women, MILFs, (laughs) pregnant. I guess, like, yes, at an older age, women do know what they are into. They will use you like a toy. Use me, abuse me. (laughs) Just don't accuse me. I'm not trying to catch an allegation in today's world. That's it, Women have just as powerful a sex drive as men. That's an underlying theme of the show. <laughs> Nancy's saying, though, at, for most of a woman's life, they don't even know what they are into. And so books like these literature radio shows are really liberating women to these ideas in today's age, not just old Betty Friedan. Nancy was having all these feelings and she was running some high circles she could run these ideas by people she trusted and they were like yeah this is normal i know your anti-sex league club runner is going to tell you that you are having demonic (laughs) thoughts he's manifesting these in your brain and you have to go do 10 hail marys it's normal to see a fat juicy cock bouncing around in some sweats and then have some dirty thoughts nancy was like yes I'll admit it does benefit the cult of women to act puritanical because you guys are wagering sex for blood diamonds and dates and weddings. You know what I'm saying here? It's in your favor at the point, not in Nevada where oldest form of employment prostitution is legal. That's always been a thing. You could just go pay to get your rocks off. That would lower the divorce rate. But Nancy is admitting, and she called it the cult of women. She's going, yes, it to play the act and trick men, it is better for our 
security, but not for our sexual gratification. Bring it full circle on the chapter. That's probably why most women are lying. You are doing the marriage. You know, you get to be the housekeeper. It's a sweet deal. I'm not being all condescending. The bigger point is you have made a trade here. Now you are having to preserve your husband's ego. He's the breadwinner. Gets you off every single time, no doubt. <laughs> it's um, group thick to do that in your life. You live longer if you have more orgasms. You are only going around on this rock. You have a set number of sunsets. Don't you want to have the best fireworks bell ring an orgasm ever basically the end of chapter one all of her fiction that she started writing in the 70s was unanimous as well because she would have been an outcast they would have called her hester Prynne and said she was a harlot for writing that kind of stuff in the 70s but she was getting other women off through a pseudonym <laughs> chapter two why fantasize when you have me that's what women are always saying. I'm right here, baby. You don't have to be watching porn. That's a big argument nowadays. Point of the chapter is women are doing a whole lot more fantasizing than men are. You got some lively imaginations. The first most common denominator a woman fantasized over is their frustration. It's going to sound counterintuitive. It'll make sense by the end of the chapter. She started off humorously ragging on the guys who are like beating off out of angst <laughs> like I just need to get this off my chest man I need to get the elixir out of me and some men use women and sex as a uh, orgasm supplement <laughs> you know she's my squeeze box whereas some women you know are looking at sex as an activity she's trying to break a point it's funnier nowadays there's a whole generation of this the coomers the millennials aren't even getting into relationships. There isn't going to be the divorce rate because no one's meeting anybody outside of an iPhone. Born too early to explore the galaxy, too late to explore the world. Just in time to coom. There's going to be like VR shit. Ugh, sex robots in my lifetime. Do I really want to see all of this? <laughs> People in the 60s thought it was going to be like the Jetsons. Technology was going to serve us and now we're in a dystopian censored future. <laughs> At least porn is everywhere for free as our sexuality dies as a species. Marge was the first lady Nancy talked about this frustration with. She was saying her husband doesn't attempt to please her in the bedroom. She's going, this is common in the marriage. Dudes stop paying attention. This makes women frustrated. So then they dream about Fifty Shades of Grey. Every single marriage in 2020 that has a dead bedroom, you're going to find 50 shades on the wife's bookshelf. It's because the husband isn't paying attention, and the guy in those movies, he, like, dedicates a whole room to this girl who's just some intern, you know? He gives it all to her, his undivided attention in their playroom. And this guy, even when he's inside of his wife, he's just trying to mail it in. <laughs> that was the whole point about some people look at this as an activity and some as a exploring new land. And common letters was like, it's not just this one Marge lady. Hundreds of honeymooners wrote in to Nancy saying, as soon as we got home, my husband was doing the martinis at 5 p.m. and we kind of lost sexual connection. And again, I can only give so much perspective on the show today, but what is marriage? You, you enjoy each other for a few years and then you hate each other for the rest of your lives? Yes, so you're not lonely for the five minutes before you fall asleep. <laughs> but now you're tied to someone for the whole day. Marriage, it loses touch a lot of the times. It's, um, that's got to be tricky, you know? Keeping the spark alive. And the kinks next chapter will help you guys out there with that. Something like 30% of our audience is 35 to 55. So I know we have some newlyweds out there. Marge wrote in again saying, This has been going on for months. I told my husband he didn't change his ways. He said he's too tired. So he puts his wet noodle in there for two minutes and then splooges all over like a five-year-old's hose. And this frustrated her, so she wrote in saying that she's been having sexual thoughts about her stepson who worked at the lumber yard in town. He'd come home sweating, and she was, like, fanning herself with an oven mitt, thinking about how her husband's always just so tired, so a vibrant young man is um, the contrast to what she's seeing. 
again, you hate your spouse, so you look for their exact opposite and then start to find that attractive. As a young person, a single person, you hate society, so everything society is into, you hate that. You become a swinger. You know, you just need something to be contrast against. That is what taboo is. When I go to a marriage, I wear all black. It's the death of two perfectly good single people. Marge, she never figured it out. She was ahead of the <laughs> country's kink on all of those pornographic websites. What's with all the step, step this, uncle that? <laughs> Can I get the one girl that I met at camp? and then never saw again you know why is that never a category it's because it's all free if it's free you're the product annette she had a brainy husband studying for a master's and she was always imagining herself in threesomes with gym rats guys from the jersey shore hey babe you want to go tanning after i do these curls and we dp you annette she would imagine a female partner going down on her in public so she's now thinking about women because her husband is so much of an intellectual. And Francesca was a younger woman, wrote in about imagining her doctor going at it because she had like a garbage man for a husband. <laughs> Sorry, dudes that are listening out there. You got to be like a neurosurgeon clown, some sort of a football playing scholar. Your wife's got to hate you no matter what. <laughs> Uh, I noticed this when I was riding my motorcycle around like girls. Oh my god, you're a dangerous guy. You like to take chances. Okay, you want to come for a ride? And then they puss out. Like girls like the bad thing in theory. It might be what gets them off in the bedroom. But fellas, you don't have to worry about them running away. Let's be real here. Go back to that whole marriage point from the first chapter. We're all making the negotiations. One of the books we just read had a stat that more frequently men leave women than men that was in more sex is safer sex so your wife might not be thinking about you to get off in the bedroom the exact opposite she ain't going anywhere <laughs> suzanne's husband she was um aware of her stranger fantasies but he would play into it and she wrote in that i get off more than anybody at my brunch group belinda we only have a few more of these belinda she would think of past sexual experiences with her man, but she needed to be touched before. So she needed the foreplay from her man with whatever suplexes and chokeholds the uh, past apes she was hooking up with put down on her. The concept of foreplay, though, is not universally expected. Some of the girls just like a quickie. It's the name of the last chapter. That's a big win in women's months for the men. Not every girl is into 10-minute oral sessions. It's not even a lot. I mean, you just get warmed up at 10. In a lot of these fantasies, the women initiated the sex because back then you were outright told that a man had to make the first move. So they're always thinking about, oh my god, what if I could just walk up to this guy and grab his crotch? It's what women are really thinking, but society... <laughs> Now it's just girls at the brunch table with the unspoken rule of it doesn't count as a date unless they ask you. They got a bunch of fucking Fiona sleeping beauties up in their tower, life passing them by waiting to be rescued. And the thing here is, if we're gonna put a cap on that marriage point so we're not so divisive the whole show, men are okay with being alone. Watch True Detective. Matthew McConaughey puts this much better than any human ever will in spoken terms. He's like, it's the true point of men and women over the years. You just see. Hits a cigarette. They just grow further and further apart, and women need that companionship. It's true. I don't know. There's probably some lonely-ass old men listening right now. But that's the type of man that a woman is into. The guy out there riding on a horse into the sunset with a big-ass mustache and a fucking brawny farm. You know what I'm saying? He's the real solitude man. So it's all about opposite and control. If you really go deep on it, you're just going to mind fuck yourself, you know? And men are okay being alone because they don't want to find out, play these individual Rubik's Cubes. Do I want to try too hard but not too hard on this girl? Am I acting too? Just be at peace. <laughs> you know, we don't need this. Lesbian girls, they masturbated to men. I mean, like, what are we doing here? Are you even lesbian then? And then uh, women, they would fantasize of love. What are you writing about, Nancy? That's their whole thing. 
ends chapter two for us. We get the best chapter now. The House of Horny. You like the play on words? I'm grabbing some coffee. And then what are we thinking? I just did that fake cigarette hit. We're going to hit some THC. I'm drinking hot coffee and I just brushed my teeth. Taking fat swigs. Chapter 3, House of a Thousand Coitus. Nancy, she breaks up the fantasy fun house into 16 safe rooms for women to explore. Literally, it was like a brothel. She didn't use that verbiage, but you picture it in your mind. There's a young jacked spin instructor as the receptionist. What can I do you ladies for today? The first room is anonymity, where a girl can go to imagine a faceless dude giving them the business. Dozens of writers over the years were saying they like to imagine a guy on the other side of a curtain giving them oral sex. This whole anonymity thing, like, guy likes to see penis going in the hole, girl wants to know why it's going in the hole. If the girl can't emotionally detach, she's never going to be able to get off. That's why I've seen this is on porn videos as well. There's, like, chicks at a hot dog stand. They're selling lemonade, and they're getting fucked behind the curtains. I don't know whose kink this is. Apparently a lot of people. I'm doing a lot of kink shaming today. It's okay. You can make fun of me. I like vanilla ice cream. <laughs> this faceless guy thing, it's, um, I was gonna say that you can't get a girl off if she doesn't like you, but that's not true at all. That's like the opposite thing again, because now you're the bad boy. Anonymity. It's probably why you could hook up so easily on Halloween. You know, everybody's in the mask, and then the girls are in the costume, so they feel safe. There is a little bit more sexual tension, I feel like, behind the masks as well nowadays. You guys are wearing your masks while having sex, right? I wouldn't want to have to report you to Anthony Fauci. <laughs> Let's move on to room two. This one was called The Audience. And this is people not only watching, but judging. We know this. The only thing women love more than judging others is being judged. It's like uh, women don't dress for men when they go out. They dress for other women want to be judged so some girls actual way they get off the only way they could do it is thinking about getting bodied in the middle of madison square garden that was actually a thing my secret garden is madison square garden you're bringing the brunch table into the bedroom mentally some girls were saying that it is their friends their aunts not exactly family that's a later room women always said that the audience had to be cheering though none of them were like uh masochist where they want it to be heckled it isn't that weird that men always want to be the masochist again taboo they have the societal power they have to decide what time they're going on the date and so now this guy is so bent out of fucking <laughs> male form that he likes to have a cage put around his penis <laughs> so many turns it takes well one of the later chapters is about the freudian like, oh, you get imprinted but the second that hormones squeeze into your penis. And now you're forever addicted to locking your penis up. <laughs> Who's doing this shit? So women, they like to be cheered along. I think this is not true for after the act. Like, a house party's a, not me. My friends come out of the room after they have had sex and then guys are cheering and the girl's, like, hiding her face. Obviously wasn't her kink. Mary Jo was the girl that was dreaming of having sex on stage with Metallica to a million Russians in an airfield. Not the exact situation. Gotta go look up videos of that. Room 3 was called The Rape Room. That's right. Do not isolate any sound bites here. We are talking about controlled play environments. Women, they fantasize about things that they would never want in real life. No one's trying to get raped. Except for women that wear spaghetti straps out on the weekend in college campuses. Victim blaming is fun. It's more about letting go of ambition and having no shame afterwards. Women's sexuality is the art of avoiding shame. Human society, it's all based on shame. That's why I use these puritanical terms. It's about letting go. That's why rape, it's the third room and so many girls are thinking about it. They're like, there's nothing I could do about it. He had a gun. 
you know, they seriously have nothing on their conscience, just let go. Can you meditate that shit off? It's a happier world if you're... Sluts rule. One girl, Gail, she cried because a guy didn't rape her. She was saying, like, no, don't have sex with me. And he was like, you want me to? He was kind of getting her body language, but she was making him take it. And this was in the 50s, so (laughs) what was his name? Wayne went all the way for it. (laughs) She was blowing her whistle. Rape humor. (laughs) I'm just trying to catch some controversy now. That's how Daniel Tosh blew up. It's the only way to get attention. This was the first time she used the word thumbprint, where people who are molested also think about or become pedophiles. We'll get Freudian later. Room four was pain and masochism. Women dreamt of being stretched wide open. Not sure who's into that gape shit. (laughs) You know, if you want to look inside of people, take an anatomy class. Stethoscopes. Come on now. I mean, I'm making the Italian hand gesture. Oh, with the all your fingers together. Now think about that sexually. That's fun to do, but I'm not ripping it out, trying to get a pink sock gaping people out here. That's an entire room. (laughs) Room 5, Domination. This would probably have a conjoined door with the masochism one. Um, BDSM, they were talking about being punished and humiliated, tying people up. Great one. We said at the beginning of the book, a lot of girls don't even know what they are into. And so, surrendering, getting rid of the shame, tying your girl up, acting like you just tied her to a railroad, and you're a bandit. You're going to take everything before her, and then you rail her like a train. So I'm talking about, baby. BDSM. Break the whip out. (laughs) Yo. I was a bit of a cowboy as a child. I ordered whips to my house. My parents thought I was a dominant online whipping women. The first whip I ever got, I ordered the wrong one off of Amazon. Bezos was laughing at me. It was like a two-foot whip, foot-long handle, and the second foot was just tassels. Like, it was the thing they scourged Jesus Christ with. And then, so, like, there's nothing I could do with this. I could flog myself while I'm masturbating. What are we doing here? So then I ordered what I originally wanted, an eight-foot-long bull whip. Okay, you put it in a circle on your belt loop, and then you whip it off Indiana Jones. It has a feather on the end. You're going supersonic every few seconds. It's the most fun toy ever. Yes, I would tie girls up from my neighborhood and whip them when they were tied to a tree. But not black girls, I would make them whip me. (laughs) BDSM, huge room in the Hooker Hotel here. Room number six, sexuality of terror. You see this on Pornhub. They have um, ghost videos. It's called like terror or something like that. I'm not sure who's into this. Demons like um, octopuses they do in Japan. That's terror to me. But that's probably some cute hentai a Tuesday for them. I was referred to as the ghost for a while. North Jersey College, one of my buddies, we... Went out to a house party. We don't need to get to graphic. Not naming names here. You're two to a room as a college sophomore. So we went back to a couple girls' place. He was in her room. I don't know why somebody didn't just go in the bathroom. But like a ghost, the theme of room six, sexual terror. I terrorized everybody in the room. <laughs> a relevant story. A reverent too. I looked like a ghost while I was shagging. That's the whole room number six. Maybe some girls like um get off to paranormal. Like, I've uh, been with girls who think they're mediums, so if I... I probably should have tried to be a ghost with her. (laughs) Put on some Frankenstein makeup. This sexuality of terror, also about surrendering control. This one lady wrote in, Lady Anne. She could only get off imagining herself floating out of control in space. (laughs) This is... nobody had been to the moon yet. This bitch invented zero gravity in her own head just so she could have an orgasm. And women are like, why aren't you trying to figure me out? Wait, so I have to buy you an anti-gravity chamber? If this lady saw the movie um, Gravity, the one with uh, Sandra Bullock floating in space, (laughs) that would be rated X for her. Pulling nine Gs in a centrifuge. Are you there yet, honey? (laughs) Room seven. The thrill... Of the forbidden. So basically having an affair, 
you put yourself in the marriage anyway. It's not that forbidden. You could do whatever you want. It's a fake thing. No, the ring on your finger is tied to your heart. Some women got off imagining uh, getting their husband around in public. Public sex. This will get you real randy, fellas. I'm talking in the woods, in fountains, in libraries, in coffee shops, bathrooms. (laughs) The woods is king. You're never going to be able to let out a louder, apish man roar on your climax. Or a woman could, as long as you get remote, your lady could cry the whole time too. Hammock sex? Let's get real here. Get jiggy with it. She said uh, a lot of those, the forbidden girls, obviously like to picture having sex right behind their man's back. Men, (laughs) we would never think about that. Room number eight, transformational room. This is women getting off to a better version of themselves. So it's not them looking at a younger image of themselves. That's a whole another room of itself, like the youth room. We'll skip over it later. Room number eight, transformation. You know these chicks, the uh, fit T girls. It's a thing. You tell them, like, you looked hot in your yoga pants today. They're ready to go. (laughs) <laughs> that didn't take much. And then they were saying that um, some of these girls can't wait till they're older. The older ones do think about being younger, so the grass is always greener on the other side. Room number nine, mother room, connected to transformation, women getting off to the thought of being a mom. That's a very interesting one. You thought as a man, like women just have this other drive within them that makes them want to be a mom. No, sometimes it is their clitoris directly saying, let's get pregnant. Imagine that was your kink knocking chicks up. Vivian, she wrote in saying that she pretends to be fresh soil for a seed to be planted in. (laughs) It's not that hard to figure me out. Room number 10, incest. Women who are abused as children usually. And it doesn't have to be them in the fantasy. It's often other family relations that they would imagine. Dominique was a chick who had an affair with her mistress. She was, like, hooking up with all of her sister's husbands. This one's gross, and it's too apparent again. Room 10, incest. How come the CIA-funded mind geek who runs Pornhub X videos, like, all of the main sites... Why don't they publish statistics about how many of the people who are abused are watching this crap? You know, they could do a lot of help with all this super crunched data, but instead it's just getting us addicted to ghost porn. Let's go to room 11, the zoo. That is right. (laughs) This is what I thought of like 70s New York. You go to peep shows, you go to a dirty video store, and then there's just a wall full of like barnyard sex. And you're like, this shit shouldn't exist. There's apparently a whole room for it. Nancy Friday writing about in the 50s. You know, wonder these people called her a antichrist. It was sexual play with animals, horses, usually dogs. Take a scroll through Instagram. You're going to find a girl that wants to have sex with their dog. Remember the horse girl from high school? I've hooked up with some equestrian girls in college, and they like to take the saddle. Horse girl is a hidden freak. Can't pass up a figure skater. Room number 12, Nancy grouped in racists like black. For that time, she called it racist. That's pretty hilarious. But now you know it's the biggest thing. Black men are fetishized while white men are tossed aside. Back then, that's what was considered racist. And when a white guy is into Asian girl, it's called fetishizing a race. So they call the white guy a racist for doing it. By 2050, we are going to be a racially muddled America. There will be more uh, inter-race couples. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of social influence that could be done with sex, and we are giving all of our choice up to these algorithms. You know, like three out of ten swipes on Hinge wind up as a marriage nowadays. It's fucking wild. (laughs) We could really let this shit be manipulated, but people are into what they're into. Like, I have had... I don't want to get too personal. The latest race as a guy that you hook up with, that's what girls think that you're into. You can just like beautiful people. (laughs) It's anti-racist too. I'm getting too excited here. We're going to have to move along because thinking about black women, let me go off for a minute. Go off, king. Black girls know how to treat a dick. Room 14, fetish. 
<laughs> I would connect it to the zoo room. Faith wrote in that she was a urogilic. She made her own name up for it. She's obsessed with piss. I was surprised to think that a woman could detach that much from the societal aspect. You're letting this man dominate you by peeing on you. Whatever. You're into what you're into. Some people, like cats, get toxoplasma and then they are sexually attracted to the urination of mice. So there really could just be some wires crossed in your brain where the smell of piss gets you off. Let people shit on each other's chest. Let every shower be a golden shower. Muniz, 2024. Room 15, second to last, other women, one of the busiest rooms in the brothel. Not every lesbian is straight, but every straight girl is a little bit lesbian. <laughs> Think about this in 2021, more apparent than ever. I bet your girl follows more female influencers than bodybuilders even. Like, chicks are just... They're too hot now with the fucking yoga. Everything is form-fitting. They're finding the perfect mid-length leg squats that build your ass to godly ratios. I mean, what we're seeing out here is unprecedented. I can't blame women for liking women because I'm into it too. <laughs> Nancy made a bigger point out of it. Lipstick lesbians were a thing back in the 60s. Like, you got a tattoo. You were just trying to say that you're not part of your mom's reading group and in 2021 it's the same exact thing like <laughs> I'm hearing in high schools if you don't kiss a dude then you are homophobic so girls of course they just do their phase as a lesbian and then they're so much more woke and open-minded at the rest of their brunch table combos our final room is going to be room 16 prostitution that's right the true women empowerment the logical end the linear end to all these waves of feminism would be letting women take back the value of their sex. Prostitution, some women actually get off that way. Like, some girls like to um, be the dom. We said the penis cage we talked about tying up. Well, the girls like to tie the men sometimes. Have full control. And prostitution, you're getting paid. You know what I'm saying here? Happy Women's Month. Every girl is a whore to a certain degree. That's right, I just got every girl to tune out because I like truth that much. What's your price? $20 for a handy and then we never have to see each other again. That's the what you're paying for with a prostitute for them to leave. As a girl, what am I paying for now? Oh, you're buying me a house? Okay, I won't have sex with other guys forever. Everybody's got a price. Just listen to some Patrice O'Neal. He's putting it much better than I am in a two-minute chapter bit. Wrapping this one up, prostitution. I'm trying to argue on the true feminist side here. Not that I don't love myself, an Asian massage parlor. All these themes, they vary from uh, societal taboos to personal kinks. Super interesting. Let's move along to chapter four. Show your moves. Quicker chapter about how women just as much like the visual aspect to sex as men do. And she said the first time that a woman sees a penis, it'll usually imprint whatever she's into. So Lindsay was a girl that rode in who was into urine as well. First time she saw a dick, she was running through the woods and the guy was pissing. I don't know if I'm into all this shit. The Freudian... <laughs> One girl rejected you in the cafeteria and now you're afraid to approach women forever. Freud, they say, was a coke addict. Reread his whole theories on the oral and the anal phase. This sounds like something me, a 24-year-old crackpot comedian, would come up with. From three to four years old, you are obsessed with the butthole. Only you can think about touching and pooping and diapers. And then from four, the oral phase. It's been largely disproven in the past hundred years. When I used to run through the woods for cross-country, me and my buddies would shit into newspaper bags because you know running around it gets your <laughs> bowels a moving and so you take somebody's newspaper bag maybe put the paper on their porch or take the classified section to wipe go in the woods shit in the bag wipe with a kamala harris congratulations <laughs> and then we would whirl around the newspaper bags and throw the shit into the air like a uh, lawn dart and the other person has to catch it, swoop it out of the air right before it hits the ground. And if it hits the ground, it explodes onto your running shoes. 
That's a fun game. I'm sexually attracted to throwing shit bags into the air. Another woman wrote in about spanking and swearing turning her on, but only when she saw herself being bent over. Have sex in front of a mirror. I don't know if I'm Patrick Bateman, American Psycho, for this. It's fucking hot. Maybe I should get into porn directing, but girls, they start acting as well. Like, they are starting to look back at it. All of that stuff. Women are aroused by the sounds of sex, just like men are. Get out there into the wilderness. Find somewhere where you could howl, scream for miles, no one could hear you. Have sex in a sound booth. <laughs> Deanna was the lady who wrote in about being a crotch watcher. Visual. She likes to see the outline, judge men. And she said, uh, this is no different than men looking at breasts. Nancy, uh, bold. She's pointing out double standards in the 60s. Well, let's think about it in the deepest way we can. Looks are everything in this sexual landscape. It brings into question the creepy hot matrix if you're a 300 pound neck beard with a fedora on and you got some sweatpants that are stained up and you got a 10 inch dick print girls are not gonna find that hot you're in the creepy zone and it's only until you are hot in their standards that you could fucking get away with anything you could follow girls home if you're hot enough, you hear girls say that, they're like, he followed me home, but I didn't even care. That's my grandma's story. Grandpa just wouldn't give up. He followed me everywhere. Did they not have restraining orders? Everything a guy does is on the border of being a creep or hot, <laughs> just based on if he shaved that week. That's fair. I don't know, women are just as visual. We don't need to drag this one out. Nancy admits that when she walks around, she likes to imagine men without their clothes on. Chapter 5, Guilt and Fantasy. This one's about indulging in sexual pleasure, trying to get away from the guilt, and how boys will download a terabyte of porn on their computer since they're 12, and then they won't look at it. <laughs> and I know you're thinking it's crazy, but guys spend like all the time sifting through porn. The point here is that men don't entertain the thoughts as much as women do. She said that women throughout the day spend more time in the fantasy world. She called it... She had some academic term for it. It's called emotional masturbation nowadays. Like you walk to the bank teller and it's a nice dressed guy in a suit. And then you spend the next three hours thinking about your life with this guy and how he would take you out, how he makes love, would he be better with sons or daughters and women do this at an insane amount compared to men who just picture the chick naked if it moves their monkey then maybe when they are masturbating later it comes back into the pdf file again we're just glancing at things we are <laughs> speed reading documents efficient masturbation getting over the guilt this is the whole game in the girl realm that's why i don't even think women like being in restaurants i mean fuck it in today's world you're sitting next to cars zooming by huffing in emissions and uh, i don't know we're eating in sheds people just want to know that oh this guy took me out so now i'm not guilty when i have sex with him because now my friends can't make how about fuck your friends you gotta convince the girl to get over the guilt <laughs> use some rhetoric on them Christina, she wrote in, she said she advised against trying different sexual positions. Her and her husband would feel guilty. And then uh, some guy recommended, their therapist recommended that she did, wrote back into Nancy how it changed their life. By the Kama Sutra, the book about all the sexual, excuse me, positions. Not all of them are practical, <laughs> but in the visual aspect from last Chester, you're going to take a snapshot that'll last you a lifetime. Nancy ended the chapter saying your thoughts can be as crazy as you want to take control in the bedroom. Have no shame. If there's one place to ditch all that, it is when your clothes hit the floor. The biggest fallacy is that you have to be a rag doll, a wet noodle, a starfish in the bedroom, ladies. Get into it. She's saying... When you put in more effort and raise your heart rate, it gets you off more powerfully as well. 
Um, like we said before, not every girl is into foreplay. <laughs> Maybe not the girls that like to have powerful or, or powerful orgasms. Then it'll definitely work if you drag it out. If you're with a man that can't surrender power in the bedroom for five minutes, Nancy says, "Ditch him." Gonna have more fun with people who are willing to play around. Chapter six, second to last and the shortest acceptance. Some women, they wrote in expressing their enthusiasm. They were bragging, saying, my husband knows everything about me. Some women wrote in in disbelief, saying that they didn't think a woman existed that doesn't have filthy thoughts. I don't know. Hopefully I'm liberating some young women out there. (laughs) If you DM'd me, I guess I would have to help you give you a study session on this book. Hearing ideas like these are what get women to unlock those filthy thoughts. And what kind of a life are you living if you don't have a little grime around the edges? You're not a person. Or it'll just get suppressed like in Japan. (laughs) You are going to start looking up octopuses inside people's orifices. This Sophie chick, she started having trouble mixing her fantasy and reality. It got so bad she was mentally masturbating too much she kissed her work husband. (gasps) And then she had to be a receptionist for the rest of her life. (sighs) With no husband. Nancy, she couldn't tell what was true she was writing in because the girl she didn't even know herself. So maybe that didn't happen. (laughs) Nancy's idea is to get your partner into group therapy so that they will listen to your fantasies. That's pretty hot. You're on like a road trip. You don't know what to do. You're tired of listening to fucking country rock. Have your girl start running her mouth about what gets them off, you know? I guess we don't all know. Not every guy's into that. Just my transitionary word. The point of the chapter is that those who embrace their sexuality are happier. I don't got to tell you twice. People live longer who come more. I would say embrace it as you see fit. We all work as a whole when we're doing our own niche the best chapter seven quickies we're just uh hammering home some of the ones we might have missed out there there's probably some ladies that are just into a lumberjacking buff man and they're like i'm being overlooked try to hit you right now there's a wide range of stuff here marge was a girl who only was having sex once every six weeks with her husband Ooh. During these sessions, the mister would take no interest, like the guy from the first chapter, and Marge was losing her complete ability to climax. (laughs) Use it or lose it? Fuck, man, as a girl, you better be slutting it up out there, or you might lose your ability to come forever. That's going to be my fear-mongering tactic next time I go to the bar. Excuse me, miss, when was your last orgasm? I'm actually here with the public health records making sure that you don't fall victim a permanent non-climaxosis. Marge, she was only able to get it back to normal when she started fantasizing out loud to her um, husband. That was the girl who showed him a excerpt from one of her dime novels. Patricia, she started learning that when she spent time apart from her husband, it made her want him more. (laughs) Patsy, she got off with a friend in a sauna once. I think I just found my kink (laughs) putting hidden cameras in female saunas. They probably are all like picking dingleberries out of their asshole. (laughs) Women bathrooms are a nightmare. Patsy is now realizing that she gets off even harder when she tells people that she's doing these naughty things in public spaces. Ew. And I hate, I think I have like repressed memories from saunas at my public gym growing up. I was just trying to release my heat shock proteins and there were old men trying to release protein onto my face. Even in the old open mic scenes, sex jokes can last for like an hour and a half. If you're getting worn out right now, that means you need to work on your endurance. Poppy was another chick that imagined having sex with all of her (laughs) in-laws. Put this chick in a dog cage when the holidays come around. She also dreamed about getting degraded from both ends from her grandpa. No! I've lost faith in humanity on the show today. Man, there's girls out here dreaming about grandpa. 
getting in their trench. What is a young man to do in the world? Nancy was saying that um, none of these should be shamed. I mean, what is it? It's just laws that are making it so we can't do these things. She's not dreaming about reproducing with this guy. The only time that we need a one-way helicopter ride or to bring back the guillotine is for pedophilia. And if there was a book written about male kinks, I don't want to read that. I do not want to know how dark it goes. Fucking Ted Bundy is fucking eye sockets. This is a good level for me. Evie was a divorced mother who was only able to get off by guys speaking Spanish in the bedroom. That was pretty interesting. That may be your kink. <laughs> like a linguistic hack. I'm just thinking about hooking up with Spanish girls. You're going to hear Poppy more than an ICE agent separating a kid from their parent at the border. Poppy, Poppy, me gusta mucho. Yeah, that's fiery Latina love. I got that in my Muñiz veins. See, I'm already figuring more out about myself. Read um, Chris Hedges couple more of these investigative journalists and they investigated the kink armory in San Francisco and they take classes about what they're into so yes I still clench like when I come across a thumbnail of gay porn maybe I don't think so I'm not part of the 11% but maybe it's because I'm scared that I'll click on it and then I'll like it you know that kind of has some validity when you start to go over these things, you discover about yourself. That guy, Chris Hedges, started hooking up with trans. <laughs> Tread lately in these waters. Um, I'm sorry if me talking about horse cocks has gotten you on an unsatiable rampage of draft horse semen. I will pay for your vaginal reconstruction. What I gather from the show today is the whole guilt complex. Women just need to get through the shame. And this is why the mechanizations of society suck so hard. You know, we're all just cock-blocking ourselves. We really could be coming aplenty and uh, shame-free if more people just came to terms with not caring what other people thought. Battle of the Sexes, it's been going on for... Probably millions of years, 6,000 since Egypt. Nothing's changed. We still hate each other. This past two months of love and then Women's Month, I don't think we made any progress. Again, I do hope that I helped some people figure out what they might be needing to get into this week. And it takes years of influence to change the zeitgeist. But books like this, little radio show, you having a conversation with your girlfriend open-mindedly, not judgingly, is what will help restore our humanity. Bonobos. We're little fucking chimps out here. Thank you guys for tuning into My Secret Garden by Nancy Friday. Next week on the show, a couple months into March now, we are going to be doing a whip clip that is on deck. We are going to be talking about jobs. Bullshit Jobs was our first ever March-themed month. <laughs> so if you like sitting around the water cooler and shitting on your boss, this is going to be the perfect show for you. The Patreon is picking up pace after uh, Propaganda in the Public Mind aired. I got... YouTube doesn't like that shit. So I'm starting to think maybe instead or to supplement the whip clips, we just start putting the conspiratorial books out on Patreon. And those are at least a dollar value a month. In the long haul, I'll let you guys see behind the scenes real quick. The entire backlog of the books are going to be going on to Patreon. And I'm going to be raising the price three to five bucks for all of the library. I don't want... Because they can give you strikes retroactively. And I've said some wild shit as I did today. That <laughs> burning joke I'm going to have to blur out. Yeah censorship sucks so we're gonna be shitting on our bosses and through here you know who my boss is <laughs> the tech overlords uh keep your eye on the patreon page people if i go mia that's where i'm going to be love the ladies out there don't forget those dms if you're into zoo porn i have a ferret the only animal i got is a snake in my pants and that concludes our march episode <laughs> happy women's month love you guys my name is nick munez peace